Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and um, here we are uh, continuing the uh, Microsoft skip in this topic and um, as I've promised in my um, implementation and configuration video for the Endis that I will give it a try to um, deploy the Endis in, um, in a high availability co setup configuration okay and um, I've already tried that and even implemented it in, in production. So yeah, I thought to make uh, to make this video and share the uh, the info with you. Yeah, so um, let's go to a diagram. So if you uh, if you haven't seen the um, implementation video, if if you're already familiar with the uh, Endes deployment steps, then it's it's fine. Um, if you have no idea. Of how to deploy um, the Endes server, uh, then I think you should go and watch the video. I will put the uh, I will be putting the link um, in the description. Okay, uh, so you can uh, watch yeah, the how to in um, in very detail on how to deploy um, the Endes um, skip environment uh, using Microsoft Endes um, Endes role. Um, right. Um, okay. What do we have here? So, in, in the past, in, in the past video uh, for the um, Endis implementation, we have deployed the Endis in this setup, in this architecture. So, yeah, we have the internet, and then the traffic goes through the um, Azure AD uh, app proxy, it talks to a connector or a bunch of connectors, and then the connector will talk to the Endis. The Endis goes to talk to the CA to issue. A a certificate for uh, an endpoint device and yeah that's it okay so if you if you were able to deploy the endus successfully then congratulations however it's not highly available so if you for any reason if you lose this server then yeah your skip service will be down till you yeah figure out how to to fix it so of course it's it's better to implement it in and high availability pair with yeah at least two uh, two servers i think two servers is good enough unless you have a bigger um, environment yet yeah, and you need to accommodate more and more um, servers okay however the problem is the microsoft endis role by default does not support high availability it it can be in, in a cluster form by nature i don't know why that role is very important so why is it being Designed like that by Microsoft, no idea. But yeah, we need just to find a find us a workaround because I can't live in a in a critical um, environment where where I need the end service to be highly available. Yeah, I can't live with just one node, even for maintenance, not just for uh, disasters, even for maintenance. If if um, you needed to patch it and you needed to reboot it, then you need to plan a downtime and uh, yeah, you know the story. Okay, so with the uh, with the Azure AD um, connectors, you have at least two. So yeah, so that makes your your life easier for uh, patching and yeah maintenance and even for yeah accepting <laughs> crashes or uh, yeah any any sort of downtime. All right, so if we go to um, this technet, I will put this link in the uh, description. Okay. And this uh, uh, technet uh, blog here, uh, yeah, it, it's talking about several important points about Endis and one of them here is the high availability so yeah here it says yeah so the question says can I cluster Endis so the question is uh, this is not simple task and there is no uh, th there's not an option out of the box so yeah by nature by design it's not supported so you need to you to wor you work your way around it okay nice so what did I do in the lab and in my production even? Uh, so just a note, in, um, in, in my previous uh, lab, I had the entire setup on, on Azure, if you remember that from my uh, previous video. Okay, but this video, it's, uh, it's uh, deployed on-prem on my home lab, on my home server. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't uh, keep the, uh, the implementation up and running on Azure for a while, <laughs> it's uh, costly. Yeah, so I had to move it uh, to my uh, server. Actually, I, I have a good server here um, at home now. All right. Yeah, so the uh, the setup will be changed a bit to be like that. So we will be putting a load balancer in between. Okay. And the thing is, uh, because 
even for production for my own production i'm i'm implementing endes on azure okay um you can get the details from my previous video uh but the thing is um azure uh, as we speak now uh, i'm recording this video now in in march 2023 um and so far microsoft don't have uh a load balancer with an advanced um, load balancing algorithms or even basic ones. So they have just a, a default um, algorithm out of the box. You can't easily change it. You can't even change it. I um, I had a discussion with Microsoft support about that. Yeah, please um, suggest to me a, a product that I can use as an internal load balancer, but they, they don't have a load balancer that can achieve this goal and I will get into the details just give me a moment here okay so I had to implement uh, a third party uh, load balancer for my production in Azure I've implemented the third party one we will uh, see it just in a, in a second okay so what's the story here why can't we load balance in round robin maybe uh, fashion round robin mode load balancing mode uh, why can't we yeah dis distribute the skip requests across multiple endless servers because there is a challenge password and you are I'd, I'd assume that you are already aware of that if you have no idea what a challenge password for endless is then please go and watch my other video for the, the for the um, description and uh, <clears throat> how to implement um, a end server okay so the challenge password is that is the the password that is used by the um mobile device management solution that you're using and your endpoint device to yeah get a certificate enrolled okay uh, that that fr uh, that um, uh, challenge phrase or a yeah, challenge password it's a challenge phrase it's it's put in the uh, uh, certificate request the csr okay so the thing is whenever you refresh here or make a new request to the end of the server you will get a new uh, new password right and that password is valid for one hour by default, you can change these, of course. However, okay. So here, if you yeah, if if you if you deploy another end server or more, okay, and here the MDM solution sends a request that goes to end server one, and end server one will return uh, a phrase code to the server, and then the server uh, yeah that that phrase code uh, will be. Um, the challenge uh, phrase, I'm sorry, the challenge phrase will be handed over to the mobile device, a phone or a laptop. That device will send the CSR, yeah, to the endless to get a certificate signed, okay? During that process, you have no idea to which node behind your load balancer, to which node your MDM will 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 your uh, your mobile device will talk. It might go to the second server, so it will obtain another password. Or yeah, I mean the other server will compare that uh, challenge uh, uh, phrase to the challenge phrases cached here, and uh, it, it, it 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 yeah, it it won't it won't be able to uh, validate your request, and your request will be, will be declined. So it will be a nightmare for you. Okay. So again, because the in the nature of this role. The end rule, it does not support high availability or load balancing, okay? There is another workaround, but it's not secure at all. Through a registry key, instead of uh, randomly changing a uh, challenge password, challenge uh, uh, phrase, you can set a fixed one. You can make up a challenge password on your own, and manually enter it here, and you can also manually enter it across all of your end servers, so in behind the load balancer, of course. So in this case, yeah, in that case, you can work in an active-active setup of Vendas, and yeah, your life will be cool, but it will not be secure at all, and it's not recommended even by Microsoft, and myself, I don't even recommend it. So this is why I had to go the extra mile and do extra effort and have slightly more complicated environment it's not a rocket science here but it became yeah complex just to issue a certificate for a mo mobile phone <clears throat> okay but yeah to make the environment as secure as possible so if we go also to this technet there's something here about the the uh, challenge um, password let me 
Yeah, uh, let me... Yeah, can I use a single password or passphrase for devices? This is the challenge password that we were talking about. So, yeah, Microsoft here says, yes, however, this is a non-secure solution. Okay, so this is what Microsoft says. It's not me, okay? Yeah, but logic-wise... It's not secure, of course. So, yeah, we have to do it. Okay, uh, okay. so, uh, Mo, you're talking about uh, load balancer here. So, we are still talking about load balancing. How are we going to tackle that passphrase thing? Okay, we will keep the settings on the end servers to the defaults. We, will, we are not going to change anything at all. Okay, however, here on a load balancer, we need to configure a weighted load balancing. Okay, so to, to have this in a setup like active passive. So one server will be all the time active and it will fail over to the second node in case of failure. Yeah, if the load balancer detects that, yeah, there's a healthy issue with this node or not. Let me mention something before I uh, forget. Um, you, you, you would definitely need to implement your environment like this if you are using other MDM solutions rather than Microsoft Intune. Because recently, Microsoft Intune introduced a possibility of load balancing from Intune's side. So Intune can load balance across different end servers. Yeah. You will, you will uh, need to, you would need, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you would need to deploy multiple um, Azure app proxies, which is not a problem at all. And each uh, will be pointing to one or a group of, um, <coughs> sorry, Azure um, app proxies, uh, proxy connectors, I mean, okay. And the app proxy will, will have a one-to-one -one connectivity to an end. So there's no need, here, no, no need here for a load balancer because the load balancing will be performed at your MDM solution level which is in tune in this case. I'm not aware of the other um, MDM uh, solution providers out there, except for um, Jamf, if you know Jamf Pro. So Jamf is an MDM solution for um, Apple devices, okay, M uh, iPhones and MacBooks. Okay, it's purely for that. And as we speak, they don't support load balancing across, yeah, the connectors or the uh, Azure app proxies. So you can't have multiple app proxies here. So in my case, because I needed to offer for my business, I needed to offer a highly available environment uh, for Skip Solution for uh, uh, the Jamf Pro, I had to implement it like that, okay? So for Intune, yeah, if you have Intune only and everything on your site is deployed or are ma being managed by Intune, then you have no, I believe that you have no uh, problems at all. Okay, let's, uh, let's proceed. Uh, I talk a lot, but yeah, I don't, need to mess any of these important details for you so yeah all right so what are, are we gonna do um the lab is already s s configured because there is no um rocket science here uh, f you already I i'd assume that you already know how to implement endis so we're not gonna deploy it again in this lab what did i do in my lab here i've deployed another endis node with the exact typical configuration as for node 1, as you have seen in my uh, implementation video for Endis, okay? So we have two nodes now, okay? And I have put a load balancer here in the front, on the front of them. Uh, you can use any load balancer you'd like, if you have the implementation on-prem, maybe you have a load balancer, maybe you have a... Um, camp, uh, F5, uh, something from uh, Citrix, maybe, uh, okay? Uh, then, uh, yeah, you already have something in place. You have a load balancer already, so you can just create a VIP and, yeah, that's it. I put these uh, servers as a backend servers and uh, you're good to go. We'll just make the proper configuration and that's it. Right. Um, or if you are going to deploy the endless nodes on Azure for any reason, then you can deploy a load balancer from the marketplace. I will let you know which load balancer I'm using in a moment. Um, yeah, because again, Azure for the time being don't have that advanced, um, or yeah, a load balancer with these advanced uh, capabilities. Uh, if you go to a AWS, then I believe your life would be also cool because I think the native uh, load balancers from AWS are amazing. Yeah, the elastic load balancers, they can do these advanced, um, <coughs> they already have the advanced uh, load balancing uh, 
uh, capabilities such as the weighted load balancing. Okay, what am I using here? I'm using a Kemp load balancer. In my lab, I'm using a free version. By the way, there is a fully, uh, no, it's not fully featured, but there is a completely free version. It's limited, of course, but you can use it not preferably for uh, 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 for production, but you can use it for your POCs. You can use it for testing. If you have a tiny environment, then yeah, you, you can. You should just go through the um, documentation of the free edition of Camp Loadmaster Virtual Machine. If you like it, then yeah, give it a go, and you can use it. But yeah, no support, nothing at all. Uh, yeah. Um, Okay, what next? So, yeah, the load balancer here, uh, I'm using it uh, from Kemp and I'm implementing it on my lab as well as my production. So, in production, in my production environment, on Azure, I have implemented a Kemp load balancer and I got it from the Azure um, marketplace. Let me uh, show that to you very quickly. So, if we go here to Azure portal should log in i haven't logged in in a yeah go to the market place yeah yeah and under the marketplace if you just type uh, i'm not sure if there is a um, f5 here or not i haven't searched for it i believe they have some yeah f5 has oh, okay if you prefer f5 then you have also your uh uh you can find also um uh, appliances for um, f5 load balancers but i prefer camp i have some yeah i have a previous hands-on experience on camp so yeah that's fine so here with camp you go with this yeah that's the load master uh, uh, load balancer uh, it's uh, for a uh, level four um, layer four to layer seven load bal balancer okay uh you can just go and deploy it you in uk you could you should First, um, check the pricing and which size do you need to deploy based on your needs. So please make a good calculation. Don't make under. Uh, don't make it under. Uh, yeah, an under calculated. Yeah, don't go so tight just because. Yeah, the traffic flow on the load balancer will go will be tight. So the load balancer itself would be a bottleneck for yourself. So planning and pricing, you can go here and check the pricing for each of the um, implementation sizes. Okay, then you can go ahead and deploy it. I already have it in production. I'm happy with it. And I have um, a previous experience in uh, for on-prem implementations of Camp. But again, it's just a, you just need a... a, a uh, simple configuration you don't because f5 f5 of course it's a, a bazooka load balancer but f5 is is, is complicated um, and you don't really need to use use that complexity of f5 just for uh, uh, HTTPS load balancing however yeah if, if you have your own license for f5 or even for camp it's it's possible if you have your uh, um, license for f5 and you want to bring your license to azure i believe this is doable so you don't need to buy extra licenses for azure in case you have a license uh, maybe you have you have a, a decommissioned load balancer and yeah in that case you can migrate that um, but please double check with uh, with your uh, sales representative on how to reuse your license either for camp or either for f5 uh, on um, on azure or AWS or whatever. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's go and see uh, the config. Yeah. So here, this is my home lab. This is um, I have a DL. Um, this is a vSphere eight. Yeah. Ignore the, that vSphere six i seven here. It's six i eight. I yeah. I just upgraded it. So I have. Um, HPE um, Gen 9 uh, DL380 server. I got that from the UK. The price was, uh, yeah, quite affordable and the performance is amazing. I love Gen 9 hosts uh, for home labs specifically because I have a, I have another Gen 8 lying there um, in the corner. <laughs> Gen 8, uh, yeah, no, it's a very slow server, um, especially in the boot, the post, the boot of the server. No, it's... It's horrible. It's nightmare to boot, to re restart it or something. All right, and uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. So yeah, I have a domain controller here. I have my uh, certificate authority as well. I have a couple of um, Endis servers, Endis 1 and Endis 2. They are both identical, okay? 
And my have I have here? Uh, yeah, this is my um, my V center. Don't worry. And this is the load master, the load balancer from Kemp. Okay. Let me go to the configuration page, and they'll tell you what you should do. Looking into the uh, this is the um, admin page. Oh, my antivirus again. Yeah. What? What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is my uh, this is the uh, dashboard of the the Kemp load balancer, and uh, of course, um, one more thing here. It's not visible here, but you should do it. Also, you should have your load balancer in high availability group. Also, you so you should also have your load balancer set up in in um, in a clustered node. So you should have another node at least. Two nodes are quite enough for Endus. If you're gonna use it only for Endus, okay. So you should also have another node of 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 um, of um, a load balancer just in case yeah the node node uh, the main node goes down then you yeah you are now uh, protect you have high availability um for your connectors for your endes but you don't have a high availability for your load balancer and um, yeah in this case uh, it's going to be a, a single point of failure for you so you should also consider if you have the luxury yeah to buy extra licenses uh, that camp is not that re that really expensive. You can buy, pay around 160 euros, as we speak, for single node. So two nodes like 300 euros, uh, excluding the um, the Azure virtual machine costs, of course. Okay, but yeah, still not that expensive at all. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's good. Okay, all right. What do we have here? Okay, so if we go. Um, <coughs> To the VIP here, yeah, so to the virtual services, so I have this front-end VIP, okay, and in the back-end I have my two lovely Endus nodes, Endus node 1 and 2, the status is up, everything is fine. What should you configure, actually? Yeah, let's uh, check that here together. Yeah, so for the normal settings, yes, you need here... Um, to make sure, yeah, let me amend this for you. I, 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 I left it like that just to show you. Okay. Um, this is the uh, load balancing um, method. So you should set it to here to fixed waiting. Okay. And set to wait a value for your uh, endpoint uh, nodes, the skip nodes. Okay. Um, yeah. And for the SSL configuration, you need to create to issue on your CA environment, on your PK, PKI environment, you need to issue <coughs> sorry, um, a SSL certificate for the load balancer itself. So I have done so. I've created a, a DNS record for it. Okay. And I have created um, a, an, a SSL certificate with um, with the C name uh, as the DNS, the common name as the uh, DNS name, the FQDN of the uh, load balancer. Okay. And of course, I have also updated, uh, uploaded c uh, here uh, the intermediate certificate. So this is the root CA certificate of my PKI environment. In case you have a bigger uh, PKI, this is just in my lab. Okay, so I, I I have one intermediate, which is just the root CA. If you have um, a hierarchy um, in your uh, PKI, if you have a root CA and a subordinate or subordinates, then you should upload the entire um, chain of the certificates, okay, for the load balancer to work properly. Um, down there here, yeah, this is the health check um, for the probe, nothing, nothing specific, just the, yeah, it should be just the slash, but it's not configured here, so let's just forget about it for now. Uh, these are the real nodes, and now it's um, also encrypting again the traffic. You can, by the way, so uh, the load balancer uh, could or must actually uh, receive the um, the traffic over HTTPS, but on your back end you can keep using your po your port 80s. On the back end, y no need to use 443 unless you need that. But in my environment, either for lab or for my production, since I already have um, both of the IIS servers on both uh, uh, the end servers are um, uh, I have a. Um, a, um, a, a SSL certificate bound for the IAS, then I'd prefer to use it. So, yeah, in case also for any reason that you needed to bypass the load balancer and direct the Azure uh, proxy directly, 
uh, to your end is then you still have something in encrypted in 443 okay uh, one more thing here um, if you are gonna if you use uh, Azure app proxy then yeah the host name of this VIP not this IP but the host name you should add this one the host name of the VIP you should add it to your Azure app proxy so instead of yeah let me get back to the graph so instead of pointing the Azure app proxy to an internal URL of your index. Now, in this case, the internal URL should be the URL of your uh, load balancer and, yeah, preferably a FQDN, not just an IP address because, yeah, again, you need to uh, associate it with a certificate because if, uh, <clears throat> if the um, uh, Azure app proxy could not validate the certificate of the load balancer, no, I'm sorry, yeah, the connection won't work and Azure App Proxy won't be able to translate the, your endless to the outside world, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? And it's not rocket rocket science at all, you can uh, do it on your own. Okay, so yeah, again, I've uh, I've issued a certificate for it. How to issue it, you are, it's, yeah, it's up to you. You can gen um, generate a CSR for, um, for the load load balancer anywhere you'd like or or also maybe you can just generate generate the CSR from here so you can do it either way okay uh, where is the uh, certificate something here um, yeah generate CSR under certificates here in in, in camp so you can generate a CSR it, it will give you the body text of the CSR as well as the private key so please take a note of both because because you will need them to issue <coughs> A certificate and then when you upload the certificate here to the load balancer you need to upload the certificate as well as the private key. Uh, CAMP accepts two formats of certificates um, um, a PEM file and uh, PFX files okay so if you're gonna most likely you're gonna issue your licenses uh, your certificate sorry from uh, Microsoft CA and it's not that easy uh, to directly export it to PFX, so you, 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 it will be exported to a CER file. Then you should, yeah, take it to uh, your, if you have a MacBook with an OpenSSL uh, application, if you have OpenSSL app installed on your Windows, or if, even if you have a Linux box or Linux virtual machine somewhere, you can use uh, OpenSSL on it to convert the CER uh, format of the certificate you can use a, a command to convert it it's easy to find up there on Google I will try to put it on a blog and put it for you just in case that you you are not familiar with that you can yeah you can use open SSL utility to convert the CER uh, certificates to a PFX or PEM um, in my setup here I've uh, just uh, converted it to PEM files you can also generate a one PFX file that includes Everything it includes the certificate, the signed certificate, the key, the uh, the private key. I mean, and the entire uh, certificate chain. Okay, so it's up to you. I used here individual certificate files. If you can combine everything in single one, if you have experience with certificates, right? Uh, all right. What what to do now? Let's simulate a failure, maybe. Um, here on camp, uh, let me zoom out a bit to be able to zoom in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, on camp here, if I go to statistics, let me <coughs> let me monitor here. Um, yeah, so it, it's good for uh, for maintenance. So yeah, if you have a maintenance, you can then on your load balancer camp or whatever, you can just uh, you pause or disable one of the nodes that you want to make um, a patching maybe or something on it to be able to reboot it safely, and then yeah, put uh, put it on or enable it again. So these are uh, this is the status right now of the nodes. These nodes are up. Okay, um, <coughs> okay, let's go maybe to, uh, let me see if I can access it from here. Actually, let's open another page. Dot local, this is my domain name here. Uh, why is it not secure? It should be secure. But this is fine, this is fine because my the laptop I'm recording from does not have the uh, chain of the uh, root uh, certificates so it's fine that it cannot validate my uh, pki uh, certificates yeah so now the load balancer now it's fine um it looks like being secure so yeah connection is secure this is nice so here i just need to yeah uh, the certificate is valid let's go through the certificate quickly yeah this is the certificate issued for the load balancer again okay so these are the details uh, blah 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 okay so 
So this is fine. If I refresh, uh, yeah, it should change this to, to the other node, but it's not the case here. But this is fine because, yeah, this is just one node. Let, let me uh, use the same URL on another uh, web browser. Let's go, uh, not, not web browser, to another node maybe. Uh, yeah, so let's go to a virtual machine here. Let me log into it. No, not typing anything. Okay. Yeah, so this is a browser browser here, so let's try it, skip, yeah. Now it goes to end the server one, let me double check the URL, yeah, this is the load balancers URL, so it, go, it went to node number one, here it went to node number two on my laptop. Uh, okay, let's make it tweak to the load balancer, because again, we don't want it to be in a round robin uh, configuration, we need to do direct... To achieve the goal, we need to direct all of the traffic to only one node. So I am here amending the uh, amending the um, virtual service. I will change the yeah the setup here. It's not a round robin. Please set it to a fixed wait. Fixed waiting. Okay, so it's fixed waiting here, all right? Um, and here the wait on the nodes. You should change it. Okay, so here, if you see the uh, real servers down there, one uh, node number one has uh, the weight value of 1,000. Okay, and the second one is to one. So this is guaranteeing that the traffic should always go to node number one right now. Uh, if I refresh here, uh, I think it should go now to one. Maybe I need just to refresh uh, the web browser, could be. Mm, but this is usual. <laughs> Yeah, this is node number one again. Nice. It was just cached. So all the traffic goes down to node number one. Um, on my... Yeah, let me... Yeah. On my virtual machine here... Where is it? Yes, this is my VM still. Yeah, go, the traffic still goes to node number one. Okay, so that's it initially. Let's simulate a failure. So this actually is uh, the uh, this is the CA server. Let's go. Let's simulate a, a failure. Okay, so I will be just uh, stopping um, the um, the IIS service here. Okay, uh, let's log into this skip server. Yeah, not typing again. Nice. Okay, let's open maybe. Oh, we need to open uh, IS. Let's stop. Let's stop IS. Okay. But before I do that, let's go to the loot balancer just to check the um, the dashboards. All right. Um, I need to check the. Um, where was that? Uh, historical real-time statistics, yeah, here. Okay, so these are the <coughs> nodes and they are up. Okay, let me now stop the service of IS. So it's stopping, okay. Let's check that here. Oh, wow, now, yeah, let's give it a moment. This one should go down. Let's give it a moment. Maybe I should just refresh. No statistics. Real time statistics. Real servers. Yeah. Now it's detecting node number one down. Okay. So let's check the uh, the web page once again. Okay. Yeah. Now it goes. The traffic goes to node number two. Yeah, if we want to validate, this is the IS, I know, so if we go to cert srv mscap mscap dot Yeah, there it is. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, let me type it. Slash cert serve mscap slash mscap tll I think I made a little mistake here. Um, skip. Um, skip. Not the LL. 
Cert serve without uh, an E, I think. Yeah, here it is. I just had a, a typo here. Uh, yeah, now this is correct, so now it's working. Okay, great, cool. Let's go to the VM here. Um, this one, let's refresh. This is now pointing to node 1. No, 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 no. Let's refresh. Now it's pointing to node 2 because node 1 is faulty. Let's uh, start node 1 once again, the service there. Yeah. Uh, start again. <clears throat> Let's go to the load balancer to check. Let's give it a moment to uh, refresh. Uh, because if I hit uh, F5 or refresh here, yeah, now the service is up. Let's check the back end. So now here it says, let's focus on this here. It says, yeah, this is the server number two. Let me refresh and see. That's still on number two. Should go to one. Should go to one. It's still pointing to two, but yeah, this is just a caching. This is this is quite normal, no worries. If I reestablish the connection maybe, let's um Let's open maybe another tab and see what happens in another, the other tab. Oh, still on two. <laughs> Let's check the other server. It's just a cache. So, yeah, here this is pointing to two. Should point to number one. Yeah, this is cool. This is here. It's it's nothing but just a, a caching um, on the web browser. Yeah, because if I, yeah, if I if I close this. Okay, let's open another session then. Yeah, now it, it, it's on node number one. Yeah, great, great. Okay, um, so we have simulated the failure. I have demonstrated the theory and I hope that I was successful in, um, in, in explaining uh, yeah, the, the, um, how it works and the reason behind that. And yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. I will put in the description uh, links to the other videos and maybe you, you will find uh, them in, in squares around the screen here somewhere now. Uh, I will try to uh, put some um, OpenSSL commands in, um, in a blog page for you also. So if you're not familiar with issuing um, uh, certificates uh, or yeah, handling certificates, I mean using uh, OpenSSL, then you, can, yeah, you will find the commands on, um, on, a, on a blog. Yeah, I will try to do this uh, yeah, right after this video. Right, um, thank you very much and uh, have a good one. See you.